Okay, I'm back. This is day two in the garden. I have to confess, I was not in the garden yesterday. We took a beach day, which is why I'm maybe a little darker than I was yesterday. Uh, today, what I want to do though, is I'm going to put this lovely looking business right here on top of those seeds that I planted last time I was on camera here. This is a compost smoothie for lack of a better term. Over the years, I've watched gardening videos and I've heard from people who are better gardeners than myself talk to me about the benefits of banana peels and eggshells. Also included in this, uh, there's some Brussels sprouts that were in our fridge that we didn't uh, eat yet. So they are also in this compost smoothie here. So I'm going to just pour these over where I put the seeds before and then I'm going to get some of the soil conditioner and add that to uh, as like a top layer on top of all that and then I uh, also wanted to share with you guys I have a sprinkler system I know some of you if you were watching last time you may be thinking how is she watering them she didn't water them last time you're right I didn't but it did rain that last time I was I was on film and it rained again after the film but let's see if I can get a shot in there uh, hopefully <laughs> hey Billy uh, there you can see a little sprinkler system there perhaps we put that sprinkler system in in 2020 from the get-go and it does it does do great uh, for the garden it does help keep business growing okay there almost okay what's this you set up camera good place there we go all right so i'm going to take these this yummy concoction here and put it where the seeds are and the rows here and then my other plan for today it's back there where the mixer is. Go ahead and add the herbs that I want to add there to what I hope is going to be my herb garden. Or maybe, it might be nice for my hubby, is go ahead and start over there the watermelon patch. The very small watermelon patch. Okay, so here we go. Now my shovel is going to smell just lovely. <laughs> little sarcasm there. This stuff, if you've ever made, <laughs> if you've ever made a compost smoothie, uh, depending on what you put in it, it has different smells, I guess. But this one, mainly because of those yummy Brussels sprouts, it's a really strong odor. Here, Tilly, look at it. that at all so let's see here there you can see the little green plops i'm gonna get in closer just in case you want to see what that looks like at this point that's pretty gross Ooh, that's so gross all right so i'm gonna take that big big glob and spread it out because it's just way too much right there and then i also have another jar of this business that i'm gonna add to here and then i'll turn the camera back on when it's time for me to add the soil on top just so i can have a record of that and we'll go from there all right, so you can see I have all the green plops in there. So now what I'm gonna do is go grab the shovel. Hey, Tilly, Tilly, no, no. Tilly, no, 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 no. Don't eat that, that's gross. Uh, I'm gonna grab the shovel and add the dirt to the top of there. So you can see I'm just going to shovel this over here like this. I'm not going to worry about spreading it out because I don't want to just mix all the green nasty up with everything else. I'm just going to let the green, the smoothie, 
the compost smoothie. Just stay right there where it is, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna pile the dirt on top of that so we don't have to see it or smell it. And that'll be that. I'll come back on when it's time to do the other garden. Okay, so behind me here, you can see I've piled all the dirt around the green nasty business there. And I'm ready to move on to my next chore for today. I was gonna show you guys this real quick. Not sure if you can see this on camera or not. I'm trying to get it in there. There is a tomato here that is doing something I've not seen a tomato do before. Almost looks like there's a tomato inside this tomato trying to climb out. I'll have to do some research online and see what's going on there. And so today, although it would be lovely to go ahead and get these uh, beds set down and leveled, I just don't quite have the energy for that today. I tried to keep up with Corey yesterday. Corey's 16, I'm 44 probably was not a good idea on my part to do that. All right, so over here, I've put down some black paper. Um, there are still a few little weeds popping up through here that I wanna go ahead and dampen down um, before I go any further with this garden bed because this will be the herb bed and it's gonna be difficult for me to tell the difference between what is an herb and what is a weed. So I'm hoping this black paper will do its job. I'll get it flattened out there and put some bricks on top of it to keep it down. I'm gonna give that a few days. If that doesn't work, if I come back after a few days and still see there's a little bit too much growth happening there, then I will uh, use a homemade vinegar and something else mix. I'll have to look up the recipe online and uh, just spray that on the weeds that are there. And over here, we can't see too many weeds, but if I lift up one of these, and I also wanna keep in mind, I have to tell you guys this, um, it's a horse fly on me. This garden bed, I weeded just a few days ago, the, the day before I did that first video, I weeded this bed and there's already new growth popping up through here. You can barely see it on camera, but I promise you it's all through there and that's brand new. This bed before that looked more like this one over here. Okay. Um, so I did quite a bit to it and it's already starting to grow back. So that's why I'm going to keep this on top of it for now. See if that'll kill off some of that. Um, and like I said, if not, then I'll create that homemade, that homemade uh, weed killer. I don't want to use the stuff at the stores. There's horse flies here. So I probably should put them something. Um, uh, just because I worry about it, even though it says safe to use after X amount of days, I kind of worry about that. I'm just not sure about that. So anyway, what should be easy enough is to take care of this bed here and put the watermelons in here. I can tell the difference when a watermelon seed starts to come up. I know what that looks like. It looks a little different than what it, the herb seeds are going to look like or the weeds are going to look like. Also, you can see in this bed, you don't have those little bitty sprouts that I have in that other one. Um, there doesn't seem to be a lot of new growth over here in this bed. Um, so I'm going to pull out these, um, these weeds that are here. If you remember from the first video I did, this over here is similar to what it looked like over there at the cantaloupe bed. Um, it was not completely weed free, but the weeds that were there, um, kind of had been there for a little bit and they weren't those little new sprouts like I was talking about. Um, so I just, I don't know, I felt like I could put some plants in there and, and be confident that what came up, I could tell was my plant that I planted not a weed that I needed to pull. If I do see weeds popping up over there, because I know where I put those seeds and because I know what those cantaloupe seeds are gonna look like when they start to uh, become seedlings, to start, they start to sprout, then I'll know, you know where I need to pull a weed or not. Um, like I said just a second ago here, those herbs, those seeds coming up and the weed seeds coming up, they look too close for me to tell the difference. So I will turn the camera off for a second and come back when I've Got something to show you with what's happening here all right so the other day i showed you a hazard of working with a puppy and putting your gloves down somewhere this right here is a hazard of not being careful about horse, horse flies in your garden um that sucker got me good didn't he yeah, absolutely um i don't see much of a bite there but he sure pulled some blood out Ugh. okay so i'm back and i have my gloves and there's a finger missing. We know who did that. <laughs> okay, so what I'm doing now, is I'm gonna dig up these weeds that are in this bed here, and then I'll turn it up. It's gonna be very similar to what I did over there with the cantaloupe garden, but I'm not gonna go through as much trouble with the trellis, and I'll show you why that won't be as much trouble in a little bit. With just one finger missing, I think I can do this right here. At least most of my hands will be clear of dirt. And I was thinking about something 
uh, just a second ago after I made that last clip. You guys may be thinking, well, Shelly, if there's no new growth here, is the soil even still good <laughs> for growing? And so I have an answer. Over there, where the herbs are going to go, the same day that I weeded that bed, I added that mister, and it's a working mister. The water comes on, and it sprays all over that bed. So it's being watered. This bed right now is not being watered. Once I get the watermelon seeds in the ground though, we'll have to remedy that situation. The cantaloupe bed, uh, the same as this bed, it was not receiving water at the time uh, when I made that video clip. So I'm guessing that's why it didn't really have any new growth in it because I had cut that black paper on it earlier in the season and it had done its job. So anyway, let's get to this job here. Getting as much of these up as we can. I'm hoping I killed that horsefly. I saw one on the ground when I went to wash my trowel so I didn't have to smell the stinky green stuff. I saw a horsefly on the ground and I had no problem absolutely just stomping on him. As much as I know we're supposed to love all God's creatures, that one. I'm sorry, God, I stomped on that horsefly. You missed it the other day when I talked about not using a tiller. If I had more ground to cover um, and if this was in a weedier shape than it was in, I probably would take the time to oil and gas up the tiller and crank it up and smell all the fumes there. But with just this little plot of land here, I think I'm fine doing what I'm doing. I don't have any problems just sitting here doing this. In some ways, I think, like I said, Earlier, it might even go faster than dragging out that tiller. That is good. I'm going to go grab the rake. Earlier, I said I'm not going to do exactly what I did with the cantaloupe bed. It's hot. I'm going to go get some water and then I'll be right back to show you the trellis that I'm going to use for this one. All right, so I'm back in the garden here. I brought this trellis over. My father in law gave us this trellis. I don't know if he knew that I would ever use it to try and grow watermelons on, uh, but that's what we're going to try and use it for. It's a little heavier duty then the tilly no 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 tilly get out of there tilly no 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 yep oh 
I do have a gate on the garden to keep her out of there so that when I'm not here watching, she won't eat the nasty green stuff. Um, so this is heavier duty, which will be needed for the cantaloupes. Sorry, not for the cantaloupes. Cantaloupes should do fine, just like they did last year on that trellis that I made. But this, I figured for watermelons would be better. You can see it's not as large. So right now I'm just gonna start with this one. Also gonna keep in mind that there's a fence back there that the watermelons can climb over to and start to grow on as well. Also want to keep in mind that watermelons can grow on the ground um, from what I've watched online. Um, when you start growing watermelons on a trellis, you also have to make a hammock for them. So it may be that I have a few growing on a trellis here and then I make a hammock for those few and maybe we have some more growing on the ground like a traditional watermelon would. So I'll pause the video and come back in just a minute so you can watch me trying to put this trellis in the ground. All right, so I'm ready to put this trellis in the ground. I just need to go grab my shovel. Now that I think about it, I'm gonna use a bigger shovel this time. Okay, so I'm back with a hopefully better shovel here for shovel for digging a hole for this post to go down in. So let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna get it set a little bit further this way. Just to maybe, nope, right about there. It's pretty good, but I'm not loving it. I'm worried worried it's not gonna be quite as stable as I want it to be. So I'm gonna try and dig each hole a little deeper. The heat is worse today than the other day. You know, the other day we had a nice rainstorm that came and cooled things off. I don't think that's happening today. So whew, I'm gonna wrap this up, get these seeds in the ground, make sure I water them this time. Because we won't have rain. And I'll probably call it a day after that. I'm going to push this dirt in here and then go grab an actual hammer. This may be tough enough to bang down on this a little bit, similar to what I did with the trellis poles over there. That worked with that shovel for those. I'm hoping a heavier hammer will help push this down even farther in the ground. Like I said, if not, then we will find other options like a post hole digger or even a stream, maybe some twine. <laughs> Lean it this way and no, that won't work. It can still flop over this way in the wind, huh? I think we're definitely just going to have to get these posts further into the ground. Okay. So it wants to stay for now, but because it's so heavy, much heavier than what I did with the trellis for the cantaloupes, I'm really worried about that wind pushing it. So I'm going to go grab a hammer and be right back to see if that works. Right, so I'm back with this heavy hammer 
that I found. It says three pounds on it. Not sure what this hammer is supposed to be used for, but today I'm using it to hammer in a trellis. Maybe that'll work. It's not really going anywhere, guys. Well, it feels sturdier though. husband were here, he'd be laughing at me, I'm sure. I'm sure he's going to tell me, Jess, you need to get the post hole digger. Yep, I think that's, well, I think a post hole digger is going to be important here. I'll try a few more times. Just don't see this going well. That's not going to be good enough for me. So I'm going to put this back. Be back with the post hole digger. All right. So Tilly and I are back. Okay. Okay. She didn't let me get it. So we'll bring it back if she actually wants me to throw it. It's a stick. She's chewing on it. So I found the post post hole digger. It took me a little bit, but I found it I'm hiding with the other shovels. So, I don't really know what I'm doing. I'm just going to try to dig in this hole that I already have in the hope that that will help. Okay. I'm not sure this is going to go deep enough. Yep, I don't think this is going deep enough. For those posts this isn't going much deeper than that long shovel that i had so i'm just gonna honestly go back to that and see if i can just dig a little deeper i'm sure there's something i'm doing wrong with this or i just don't have the upper body strength to push it down in there i may have to wait till son or hubby returns and can do this for me for now let's keep using this one Right <laughs> All right, I may have to put the trellis idea on hold. I think what I'm going to do is leave these holes here invisible so I can see where they need to be and not plant any seeds there so that when we come to put the trellis in soon, I hope that we can work around where I have planted seeds. Having said that out loud now, it seems kind of like a silly idea because we'll be stepping all over them. Watermelons don't have to have a trellis. So let me just think about that. I have the seeds with me. I think what I'm going to do is leave those two holes where I know I want my post to go right there so that if we can come back and figure out a way to get that trellis in there safely so it's not going to be falling over, then we can. I guess one option is to put it in there and hope for the best. I mean, it was in there. I don't know that it honestly would have gone anywhere. So I'll tell you what, I'll do that for now. And if I feel like it's just a lost cause, then I can always remove it and put it somewhere else. So let's get this dirt out of here.
I'm shaking it back and forth like this, watching the dirt fall down in the hole there in the hopes that that maybe helps to stabilize it with the extra dirt packing in there. I'm not sure if all that that I just did actually helped anything. Maybe it did. All that shaking business, I mean. It's possible because the dirt would fall down in there and perhaps it's a little packed in tighter than what it otherwise would have been. I can always continue to pack it. And we'll see if it'll stay. And if not, I'll be fine too, I guess. All right, so next step is to put those seeds in the ground. I think I have them in my pocket. Yes, I do. All right, um, I do prefer to have gloves for this, so I have to find where I put those. I'm gonna go find my gloves and I'll be right back. All right, so before I made it to picking up my gloves, I opened the seed packet and there are one, I'll show you, see if we can see here. This is all that was in there. There were more cantaloupe seeds in the cantaloupe packet. So there's one, two, three, four that look pretty good to me, to the untrained eye. There's this fifth one here that's a good size, but it looks kind of, I don't know, kind of worn down. And then there's, there's three little bitty ones. So I'm going to plant these larger size ones in their own little space. And I'm going to put these three smaller ones in, it, in a space together. I don't know what my logic is there, just what I think we can do. I have these little sticks here. These are gonna be my markers and somewhere in the bed, I'm gonna take my watermelon packet here and put it on, on a stick, stick this in the ground. So this will kind of be like my sign, letting me know that in that bed there are watermelons. So let's get to doing this. So let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, and then this for the smaller ones. So, since I do kind of want some to grow on the trellis, I'm going to put one seed directly under the trellis or kind of, I guess, to the side would be better. one I'm going to put closer to here in the hopes that if it wants to it can climb up the fence here. It can even go out the fence if it wants to. If the watermelons all want to grow across the yard here that way that's fine. Um, grab the sun that at the end of the bed down there so that oh no these is these are the watermelon seeds growing here hopefully if you're wondering about all this mulch around here my husband got this for me he thought i would need it and don't really need it i never told him i needed it 
but he was just trying to be helpful. So it's there. Hang it out to the edge. Maybe one day I'll need it. Certainly not bad to have if you ever do need it. All right, so now I just need to bring some water over here. So at 5.45 this afternoon, these sprinklers should come on. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this one and get it as close as I can to this bed here so that it can get some water from this. This other pot over here that I stole that from does have another one or two sprinklers that hit it uh, enough for now. So um, I will though need to run another whole sprinkler line to here to make sure the watermelons are getting all the water that they need. All right, so um, I'm gonna come back and look at it at 545 and see if it looks wet enough uh, if it doesn't, if it looks like some areas are missing, like the far side over there, maybe if the sprinkler doesn't reach that far, which I doubt it will. Now that I say all that out loud, <laughs> I think I should just go grab a hose and see if I can water this sucker. And the only reason I'm hesitant to do that is because of how we have our water set up here. It's not necessarily the easiest thing to do. I'll show you why. It's a great system for just... Uh, you know, having it automatic. It's a great automatic system that we have running here. Um, there's a wizard in here, just to let you know. And he's not dead, although he may look dead. You can't see him. He looked dead to me the first time I saw him. He looked mummified. Um, so really, let's see if I can get it so you can see this. Um, it's not showing up. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. Maybe they'll, no, now maybe you can see it. Um, there's that lizard there. He's not dead. The feather crabs are absolutely dead. They crawl in and can't get out. The lizard must be able to get out. Like I said, he's not dead. I know he looks mummified, but I'll show you in a sec. I can move him with a stick and he jumps around. Um, he can get out. I'm guessing my son put the stick up here for him to use. Oh, he just blinked. I don't know if you saw it. Anyhow, um, putting in a uh, a, a spigot there that has the two spigots on it would be a good idea. Maybe one day I'll do that. It seems like we tried to do that and it wouldn't fit with the timer in here. That timer works great. It'll come on uh, however I set it to. Right now I have it set to come on at 5.45 a.m. and 5.45 p.m. That's every 12 hours. So what I'm going to try to do with the hose though, so you know, is there is this line here where I hooked up the mister. I believe that I can take a hose and attach it here and just manually turn on my sprinkler and then I should have water coming through that hose, at least at a slow trickle. So that might be what I have to do. I'll get back with you. Here's who is very interested in what I'm doing down here on the ground. Just want to show you there's that lizard and here's my timer. I'm going to go ahead and adjust it to manual. Watch out lizard. Watch out. Watch out. There we go. Okay. There, he's moved. You might need to move a little more. Or not, it's up to you. So manual, Ooh, we're gonna put it on. <coughs> All the dust is getting to me here. So we're going to push that to manual and I'm gonna get all sprinkled on today, I'm sure here. So push on manual. There we go, it says for one minute. I'm gonna need it a little longer than that. We're gonna go ahead and do um, eight minutes. Actually, let me back up. If I do this now, I won't be able to get the hose on. So let me put this back to off. There we go. All right, guys, I'm gonna leave that on off and then try and hook okay. this hose up. So now we're gonna turn this to on. I need more than a minute. We'll do eight minutes for now. And it's still blinking. And now it says it's coming on. So it sounds like my hose is working. That is awesome. Yay, well that is good to know that I can do this. So now what I'll do is I'll leave this hose out here so that whenever I need to water something that maybe is not being caught by the sprinklers, I can do so. The sprinkler is working. It's not doing a very good job of hitting up those watermelons in there. So I'm probably just gonna put him back where he was, that sprinkler head, and I'll just water the Watermelon with the hose here. Of course, this sprinkler head and all the sprinkler heads will have more volume when the hose is not running. That hose is using up a lot of volume right now. 
that's okay to still be set to come on at 5 45 this evening and i'll have the mister back hooked up so that we can have our normally scheduled watering all right so over here i think we got it pretty good I'm gonna put all of these watered and as soon as i'm done with this i think i'm calling it a day you guys and we'll come back tomorrow and take care of those box beds that are over here those two there they need to be set in place and leveled and then i can finally get that trailer and all that dirt out of here hopefully tomorrow i'll be rejuvenated enough to do all that all right i'm gonna set this hose down here let y'all have a look at the garden here overall how it looks now sort of kind of almost the before and after so we have the tomatoes there this is where the carrots hopefully will be growing and sage and maybe even chives as well in that pot we have carrots and sage over there that's where the cantaloupe should be while i'm here i can get a glance at how well they are being watered they don't seem to be getting quite enough water so yesterday's rain would have been very beneficial to them so what i'll do is i'll use the well that sprinkler head's not doing anything right now look at that one it's flowing the wrong way let's turn him around so we just turn this is a half one some of them are whole meaning they circle all the way around they spray all the way around uh 360 this is a 180 so it just sprays in this direction but even still that's not quite enough now of course like i said that volume is not quite there like it will be later when that hose over there is not running so let me just do one slow loop around to not make you too dizzy the garden so we can see how it looks now and then i am signing off for today and i hope you guys have an excellent morning afternoon evening whatever time it is in your neck of the woods